Hey guys, what's up? This is Bucket Ponds, and my name is Terry. And today I'm going to show you how to build a simple jar aquarium for raising bladder snails. So for this project, I have chosen a 54 ounce jar with a lid. Larger jars will work better, but a jar this size can hold comfortably uh, well, several dozen bladder snails, probably more than that. So we're going to jump right into the build video. You might hear some of my air pumps and water filters and fish room stuff running in the background. I hope that doesn't bother you too much. And uh, let's get started. All right, so here we are in our little workshop area. And here's our nice jar aquarium. It's a little cloudy inside. And uh, we don't know what might have happened to it during uh, shipping or at the warehouse. You know, it might have got a little dust inside. Uh, maybe it was exposed to some different cleaning agents and things. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, rinse this out. Nothing to it, we're just gonna rinse it out pretty thoroughly and I'll be right back. So there we are, we're all cleaned up and it looks great. I chose this jar because it has a wide mouth, which means we can get in there and scoop some of our snails out pretty easily. It has a nice flat face for viewing and it even has a label in the back that we'll uh, write something on. But uh, always rinse your jars, it's very important, especially brand new jars. Now you may remember, or you may recognize this particular shape, as we've used a couple of these jars to build jar aquariums in the past. I happen to acquire about six of these now, so we're going to use them for all sorts of projects. But for this one, we're going to build a very simple bladder snail jar aquarium. And I'm uh, approaching this as I would when I was a brand new hobbyist. You know, the Wallstad method, all that stuff was too complicated for me at first. So instead, we're going to just go with a very simple idea here. In this project, we will include some of our stones. These are lava rocks taken from an established aquarium. Now you can skip this if you don't happen to have an established aquarium, but generally a pet shop, they'll give you a little gravel or something. And uh, yeah, I just happen to have tons of aquariums, so I'm going to use a little bit of lava rock. This will help to seed the project with some beneficial bacteria. Just drop it in there like that. We have a couple other pieces that we're going to toss in there as well. We're not going to use any soil in this project. No sand. But we are going to include some marble chunks. This will act as a pH buffer. This will release a bit of calcium into the water. And you'll notice your snails will be constantly scraping on the marble chunks. They'll be chewing on it, essentially. This will help to promote better shell growth healthy shells, and you can get this lava rock, or excuse me, you can get this marble at Home Depot or any improvement store, any home improvement store. Um, it's used for, you know, like yard projects and stuff, but it's entirely safe for our bladder snails. I might not use it in an aquarium because it will modify the pH a bit. There we go. Looks pretty simple. Now, normally I would include water from an established aquarium, but if you're just starting out in this hobby, you probably don't have a fish tank to take water from. So we're going to use some very simple, very clean uh, water from an artesian well. If you don't have access to good clean water like this, maybe you're living in a big city somewhere, uh, you can use bottled water. Uh, I would look for maybe some kind of alkaline water. Alternatively, if you don't have access to anything like that, you can get some water from your tap, right there in the big city, you can fill up a jar and let it sit overnight. That will allow the chlorine to dissipate off, to evaporate, and you'll be left with water that should be fine for your bladder snails. I have to get some more water. We're going to go to right about here for our water level, maybe a little higher. You could also collect rainwater, uh, but I am hesitant to suggest that as it's actually illegal to collect rainwater in several states. And uh, I don't want to get you guys in any trouble. So we're just going to use our good clean water here. Right there. Now this might sound a little wacky, but if you do use chlorinated water from the tap and you allow it to evaporate off, it will create something called Mutagen X. Yes, a, a mutagenic chemical, a compound that will cause uh, various changes in the DNA of your snails over time. Um, I'm not a scientist, I can't really back this up too much, but um, Mutagen X is real, and humans consume it every day, and uh, with unknown health 
side effects. So be careful if you happen to use tap water. It shouldn't affect anything in the short term, but you never know. But there we go. We have our water level about where we want it. And now I'm going to add some plants. Now, if you're just starting out, you probably don't have many plants to play with. I did that just for a few years, though. And we have tons of plants of different types, all popping out of our jar aquariums all over the, all over the house, really. But I'll be right back. I'm going to get some, uh, some day flower. So there we go. We have a nice piece of day flower. Now, if you're just starting out, you probably won't have access to a plant like this. But uh, I can assure you that this day flower is a very common plant species. And there are tons of plants that will work in jar aquariums, things that you would not expect. This uh, day flower happened to come from my very own backyard originally, and it grows very well in a jar aquarium. You've seen it a dozen times on the channel. It's one of my most favorite plants. It's very easy to work with, and it's almost foolproof. If you're just starting out and you don't have access to a plant like this, I would suggest that maybe you visit a pet shop, a fish store, preferably a small mom and pop style fish store, and they will most likely have some kind of plant that you can use in your project. I would avoid java ferns or things like that, but java moss is a good idea. And in fact, I'm going to include a bit of moss of our own. Now, I believe this is hypnomoss. I happen to grow this on some paving stones in my backyard. Uh, but it grows uh, very much in a, the same way as java moss. And you can literally order some java moss off the internet or at a local fish shop. And that will take care of all the plants that you might want in your project. I am including the day flower specifically to show you that bladder snails will not eat live plants. They just will not eat live plants. Um, that's a misconception I see a lot online, and uh, people seem to think, oh no, the bladder snails are going to eat all my plants, but they won't. Don't even worry about it. All right, so we're just going to set our... Oh, apparently there's all kinds of insect life in here. Didn't plan on that. That is an isopod. Check that out. That's a little isopod. I'm going to have to put him in a special container, and we'll see about raising him as a pet in the future. There we go. And I'm just going to set him over here. Uh, over here for now. There you go. All right, so be prepared to see a couple uh, wild insects if you happen to uh, take your moss from outside. But anyway, we're going to place it in there, just like that. Now, this moss will naturally float, and it may release a few small particles into the water. That is totally fine, won't hurt anything. We're just gonna use another piece of marble to pin that moss down to the bottom, just like that. That's almost perfect. Man, if I could get it to stay like that, that would be amazing. But I'm not quite sure it will stay like that, so we're gonna add another piece right there. All right, that looks pretty cool actually. So we're gonna run with that. We have a couple little other pieces of moss that fell off. We're just going to drop them in there. It might grow uh, floating. It'll probably sink over time. I'm going to brush this away. So remember, you can use java moss from your local pet shop or purchase from an online dealer. As for the day flower, you may have uh, some trouble finding a similar species, but I wouldn't be surprised if you could order day flower online. I would love to sell these plants myself, but... I have to charge so much for shipping to do it legally um, that it just doesn't seem right. You know, it seems like I'm overcharging you guys. So I'm just going to cut right there. We're going to make this day flower into two pieces. And we're just going to drop it into the tank. If you are working with day flower, either Asiatic day flower or climbing day flower, uh, that's all you really have to do. I like to pluck one or two of the leaves off and then just drop it right into the water. That's all there is to it. Now, over time, we will have to trim this because it will be trying to grow up through the lid of the jar aquarium, and it will uh, be everywhere, <laughs> essentially. It'll grow long, long strands. So what I'll do is I'll come back and I'll cut that, and I'll just put the new cutting right back in the tank, and we'll just keep doing that until we have a whole forest of day flower in here. But so far, this is really beautiful and very simple to set up. Next up, we're going to get a small handful of our bladder snails and add them directly to the tank. There we go. These guys will come with a bit of duckweed. We 
which is totally fine. Go ahead and let go there, guys. Let go. And we're going to get a few more from our other projects. Now, I've talked a lot about the genetic diversity of lighter snails, and I've actually gotten to a couple discussions with you guys talking about how bladder snails are asexual. Meaning that they, uh, they do not need a mate to reproduce, they can clone themselves. Well, they can't really self-clone. That's sort of a myth. They can breed with themselves, meaning you only need one snail to make babies. But, that's not ideal. A single snail will wait as long as six weeks or even a few months before he will, or it will, um, impregnate itself and have its own babies. They prefer to have mates from other populations. Somehow they can sense the difference between a snail that grew up with them and a snail that grew up elsewhere. I think this is really cool. But uh, yeah, let that be a lesson. Uh, bladder snails are not asexual. They breed just like we do. They just happen to be both male and female at the same time. But yes, bladder snails will react, um, interestingly, when exposed to foreign, exotic bladder snails of their same species. They will immediately try to breed with the new snail, and I think that's really cool. That is uh, their own method of searching for genetic diversity. Just like how humans find accents to be attractive. You know, this shows you this person came from far away. They are not related to you at all, and breeding with them will create very healthy offspring. The snails operate in a very similar way. There's another trick to increase the rate at which your bladder snails will breed, and that is by exposing them to crayfish chemicals. Um, taking water from a crayfish aquarium, putting it into your project, will cause your bladder snails to uh, essentially uh, experience fear. They will be afraid and then they will start to breed more readily to make up for the losses of the predator in their environment. This is really cool. Bladder snails are amazing, extremely adaptive creatures. You don't need crayfish material to uh, have a healthy bladder snail population. They'll breed out of control anyway, but there are ways to make this happen much, much more quickly. And there's a couple more. So I've added bladder snails from three different aquariums, and <laughs> they will sometimes uh, be reluctant to release themselves to let go of your hand if you happen to scoop them up by hand. Um, but do not be afraid. There we go. So we have a ton of bladder snails in here now. Several different populations are being mixed together, and this will cause them to breed uh, in a very excited and um, interesting way. This tank looks amazing so far. I'm very happy with it. Now you might be asking yourself, what do I feed my bladder snails? Well, naturally they'll eat any material in here, any decomposing organic material, like this stray leaf, that will become a food item. They'll eat material taken from that moss, because it did have a little dirt with it, they'll eat that up. Any algae that tries to grow on the glass, they will gladly chew that up as well, as they move throughout the tank like little tractors, like they're mowing a lawn, essentially. But you can also feed them other items, and I like to feed mine cucumbers. So I'll be right back with a few slices of cucumber. All right, so here we go. This is a slice of a cucumber that I grew right here at the Bucket Ponds headquarters, the outdoor oasis. And I'm not sure how they'll react to the skin of the cucumber. That might take them a little longer to eat, but a slice this size will feed them for about two weeks. And that's all there is to it. You want to be careful not to add too much food at one time, and you can feed them other items like banana pieces, banana slices, but in my experience, the bananas make a huge mess. Uh, strawberries are a good option. They will tear up some strawberries like uh, a complete massacre. Uh, but that slice of cucumber will feed them for a long time, and bladder snails will also breed more quickly when they have a lot of food available. So that slice there will basically become a whole bunch of bladder snail eggs in the future. We also got some duckweed in here, and that's fine. Duckweed is not going to hurt your snails at all. They will eat the duckweed. You know, duckweed does occasionally wilt and die, and they will eat any little pieces that wilt. Uh, you can also order duckweed, duckweed online, uh, but it's not required. 
Uh, my aquariums just happen to have duckweed, and that's where the snails like to chill, mostly. Now, this jar does have a lid. It is not a completely airtight lid, unfortunately, so we can't use these to make ecospheres, but we can close it and not worry about suffocating our bladder snails. That's why I was able to fill the water level so high in this project, because a little air will get in there. Also, the moss, the plants, and the algae will produce a little bit of oxygen as well. So our snails are going to be very happy in this project. And I'm pretty happy with it, too, honestly. I think that's a great-looking little nano aquarium. And you saw how simple it was to set up. Pretty much everything on here you can order on the Internet, find in your backyard, or otherwise, you know, replace with some other different options for plants and different pets. A tank like this will work for pretty much any type of bladder snail. And um, don't be mistaken, there are hundreds of different species of bladder snails, or maybe not hundreds, but there's quite a few. Um, there is the cave acusia, uh, the rock acusia. There's all sorts of different varieties of bladder snails. So if you happen to catch some from a local pond or a lake in your state or in your hometown or in your country, um, there's a good chance that you'll have a slightly different version of your bladder snails. Some of them can even hybridize and breed together. All right, so I switched to our different camera version here uh, so that we can get a better look at some of our little friends as they swim around and as they crawl and feed and explore. There we go. So these are my bladder snails that I've been breeding uh, for quite a while now. We've gotten samples from different states. Um, we've taken some samples from different locations in the wild near our location as well. And um, I can't guarantee that they'll hybridize. Of course, some hybrids are not viable. But I do know that they try to breed, and they breed pretty quickly. So, uh, yeah, I like to refer to them as my bladder snail breeding program. You know, we've crossed a whole bunch of different family groups together to create a more uh, durable uh a stronger bladder snail, essentially. And um, it should be noted that inbreeding, you know, like let's say that we had bladder snails in an aquarium for years and they never got any new members. No exotic snails were introduced. Well, they will eventually get inbreeding fatigue. And that means that they will be less likely to breed. They'll breed more slowly. They'll also have health problems and they'll suffer a bit. So our bladder snails that have been crossed with so many different family lines are very happy and very healthy, very strong. You'll see some bubbles on the glass here. That is not from photosynthesis. That is just from, uh, you know, the water filling up the jar and some air bubbles getting trapped. There's a nice bladder snail right there. Um, most of them will stay up near the surface to start with. Uh, because that's where most of the food is at this point. <clears throat> and uh, bladder snails can breathe oxygen. They can come up to the surface, get air, go back underwater. And uh, yeah, they're not too worried about uh, eutrophic conditions. So you can find them in ponds that are completely covered over with bog mats and plants and things. And uh, odds are there's probably some bladder snails in there. Typically, if you know a pond has uh, crayfish, there's most likely going to be some type of snail in there. And yeah, they're pretty easy to find once you know what to look for. I would avoid searching in rivers and places like that because, you know, bladder snails, they tend to hang out in little still waters. Ponds, uh, places like that, uh, ditches, canals, uh, tributaries, little offshoots from rivers. That's a good place to look. Marshy, wetlands, uh, swamp-like areas, big mud puddles. That's where I tend to find bladder snails. But our particular snails have been crossed with uh, members from Puerto Rico, Texas, Kentucky, Florida, quite a few different places. And just to emphasize my point, here they are. And they are already breeding. That is a breeding chain of three or four bladder snails together. And that's an example of them being exposed to a new environment with exotic snails. They will begin to breed immediately. They'll also scoot around and knock loose all of these extra air bubbles that were trapped in here as we set up the jar. 
Uh, it's a little bit blurry, but right there are some bladder snail eggs that were uh, captured accidentally among the duckweed. And they will hatch in this new jar. They'll be born here, and that's pretty cool. There we have one nice adult bladder snail over here in the corner, and they look like they're pretty happy in their new tank. We should expect to see quite a few bladder snails in here in the near future. We'll be able to move them around and mix them with our other pets, and uh, yeah, I think that's pretty cool. We've created a bladder snail breeding container. If you're building a jar like this at home, then you can expect to have your snails in here for years. Uh, without having to do much maintenance, you might have to do a little water change here and there. Just really just add water, top it back up due to evaporation. That's usually enough for bladder snails. And uh, your plant should do pretty well. Uh, turns out bladder snail waste is actually extremely fertile fertilizer for plants. So, yeah, it's a mutually beneficial system. I did choose a jar with a lid, and that's not required, but a lid will prevent any escapes as they will occasionally climb out of the water and explore in search of different places to live. But ultimately, I think we made a really nice jar aquarium. I look forward to watching it develop in the future. These bubbles will dissipate over time. But I really like how that moss is like suspended there in the background. That's just so cool to me. And uh, yeah. So if you're building one at home, I hope that you uh, found this useful. We learned a few things. The bladder snails like hard water. They like marble chunks. Uh, they like uh, plenty of water to uh, dive down into. Um, they enjoy foods like cucumbers, uh, even bananas and strawberries. They'll also eat any detritus, any leaf litter, any decomposing material in the jar. They will consume it directly. You can also feed them with fish food if you chose to or algae wafers, or even uh, invertebrate foods. Or sinking pellets, kind of like this. This would be a fine food for your snails. They are not very picky. As long as they can develop strong, healthy shells, they will be happy little guys. So I hope that you enjoyed this project. I had a lot of fun building this with you. And we're going to leave it up here on our windowsill with some of our other plants and projects. We have all of our different ecospheres up here. And uh, we have a few off screen as well. But I can say that all of the ecospheres have been very successful. And I look forward to showing you this bladder snail jar aquarium in the future. So thanks for watching, guys. This is Bucket Ponds. I'm showing you how to set up a simple jar aquarium uh, with very low cost. Uh, without, you know, any extreme levels of expertise or any, uh, you know, experience needed. So thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, uh, drop a comment, all that kind of stuff, guys. I appreciate it, and I'm happy to uh, entertain you.